Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. One of the media messages after Barack Obama's State of the Union address was a new spirit of bipartisanship. ABC reporter Jonathan Carl said evidence of a new thaw was the passage of a trillion dollar farm bill. You saw this elsewhere in the media. Passing a bipartisan law is good news. But the farm bill isn't just about farm subsidies. It's also where low-income families get food stamps. And part of this new deal is cuts in that program, almost $9 billion over 10 years. That's less than an earlier Republican proposal, which would have been a $40 billion cut. But besides being bipartisan, always a good thing for corporate media, the cuts were presented as no big deal. Having said that the provision on farmer subsidies matters a lot, CBS's Scott Pelley added this. The compromise also cuts the food stamp program by eight and a half billion dollars over 10 years. That's about 1% of that program. Well, try telling that to people who rely on this assistance to eat. And kudos to one NPR report that did exactly that. It's estimated that over 800,000 families will lose about $90 a month. That's barely news, though. What's important is that politicians from both parties have agreed to inflict this pain. MIT is a new documentary made by a filmmaker close to and evidently fond of its subject, Mitt Romney. So it's not surprising that it portrays the former presidential candidate as a warm and fun guy. What is surprising is the way news media are responding to the film, suggesting that the rosy portrait is not just realistic, but somehow more realistic than the Romney that the public saw and rejected as a presidential candidate. Aside of Mitt Romney, we rarely saw during his White House run, and now a new documentary is pulling back the curtain even more. Those close to him always said, if only Americans knew the real Mitt. A new documentary screened at Sundance last week and released on Friday introduces anyone with a Netflix subscription to The Real Mitt. About halfway into it, I thought, why didn't the guy I'm seeing here run for president? In just 90 minutes, the filmmaker really conveys this warm human side of Mitt Romney, something that in covering his 2012 campaign, I can tell you his veteran consultants constantly struggled with. Uh, ultimately, they failed to accomplish. The repeated question, why didn't we see this guy when he was running for president, is a little bit like asking why drinking a certain brand of beer doesn't make you as popular with attractive strangers as the ad seemed to promise. But it's worse because journalism is meant to be about interrogating politicians' constructed images, not celebrating them. And finally, media usually pay attention to domestic terrorism cases. And the public has been trained, if you will, to think of certain kinds of people when we hear about a planned terrorist attack. But what happens when the accused terrorists don't fit the profile? Well, then, it isn't news. Consider the two men going to trial in upstate New York on serious terrorism charges. They were reportedly working on a triggering system for a high-powered radiation weapon intended to kill victims silently and from a distance. Officials say the men were planning to target Muslims. The leader of the plan is Glendon Scott Crawford, a General Electric employee, Tea Party activist, and self-described Ku Klux Klan member. His supposed accomplice is Eric Feit, an executive at an industrial electronics firm. During the course of the investigation, officials say Crawford took an undercover federal agent on a car ride to scout a local mosque. Despite its compelling, not to say bizarre, details, coverage has been very limited. The New York Times, published just 150 miles away, did a single story about the plot after the arraignments last June. It's hard not to think about previous undercover terrorism cases and conclude that if the suspects in this story were Muslim and their planned targets, Christians and Jews, it would have ruled our media world for the last several months. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching Fair TV.